Are we live? Are we live? Yes, we are live. Are we live? All right, let's get live on TikTok. All right, good evening. I'm your lawyer, Patrick McGeehan. I am your best friend at your worst time, and I am your South Florida lawyer. Tonight's live, I'm having problems with YouTube and getting it going with the uh, the advanced setup. So I'm not really sure why that is occurring. That's happened the last couple of times. Anyway, tonight's Law and the Life Live. We're talking about things you need to know before you file for divorce. The number one thing to keep in mind before you file for divorce is when a divorce comes in the courts, courts are naturally an adversarial process by their nature. Um, the courts, I don't even think divorces should be in the courts. There should be other, some other system for, for resolving divorces. Courts are set up on the on the adversarial thesis the adversarial philosophy and when you throw a family into that it can cause just mayhem in the lives of the people not in all cases but in a lot of cases keep in mind the adversarial process you may get into it and you and your spouse or you and you know whoever you're litigating against if it's a paternity action or domestic violence action or whatever it has the potential to become highly adversarial, and it can turn it can turn litigants who are not necessarily adversarial in the beginning into into complete adversaries. And the more you go along, the more battles there are in your case. The more you need to know before you file for divorce, so you don't get caught by surprise, is what your actual financial position is. I've had a lot of cases, and it's usually the husband who pays the bills and controls the finances, and the wife has no clue what their financial position is. And I've had a more than a few cases where we've discovered hidden assets, um, joint bank accounts with third parties that were never disclosed, uh, significant loans, loans for cars for girlfriends and boyfriends, and just craziness um you got you got to keep in mind i had one case where a guy had a guy bought his girlfriend a car got the loan during the marriage and tried to claim that part of the loan was the wife because he got it while they were married that might be true for a loan between the husband and the wife the husband and the wife borrowing it courts family courts are equitable and far as an equitable distribution state so the court is going to use equity, which means they're going to try to be fair when they're dividing assets and liabilities. And the girlfriend's car loan is not going to fly putting off on the wife. I've also seen cases where there's significant student loans. There's loans for assets and real estate that the other party never even knew about. Um, I had, I've had cases where it's kind of like a Ponzi scheme where one party is in control of the client of the couple and then they're paying off they're selling assets to pay off try to pay off the loans and it keeps going on and on and on until it finally collapses and i've had clients that were shocked to find out that the other party had them you know several hundred thousand dollars in debt um you're, you need to know what accounts are out there. You need to look at, at uh, bills when they come in. You need to look at bank statements when they come in. You need to get online and review bank statements, know what car loans there are, know what the payments are, know, know what the lending institutions are for all the loans. The more educated you are on your financial position, the better off you'll be as you proceed in your particular case. Um, Another, if you want to get started on it early before you even file, I have a free cheat sheet that will save you money on the financial part of a Florida divorce case. And if you want that, I'll put a link in the address below when I update this and put it on for replay. Also, you can get it from my Twitter account. It's the first pinned tweet on my Twitter account, which is at PJ McGeehan Law. 
and that's always pinned to that account. You could also get it on my webpage, which is pj pjmlawyer.com, and you can get it in my Facebook group, Ask a Florida Divorce Lawyer. You can get it all this, but and if you email me at patrick at pjmlawyer.com, of course, I'll send it to you. But there's um, in all those places, there's a landing page for it where you can get it emailed to you directly right away. And you can get an idea of what the financial disclosure is in a family law case, a divorce or a paternity case. And you can start gathering that and have it ready by the time you need to educate yourself on your financial position on the couple's financial position. Um, another thing to keep in mind are filing fees. There's a filing $60 um, depending upon who you hire. So those are some expenses that people people don't realize. It's, it's expensive just to file a divorce petition and people are caught off guard by that all the time. And let's just check over here. Are we getting anybody on? We are not getting anybody on YouTube. So let's look and see if my YouTube is actually working. It may not be working. I wouldn't be surprised. They see Lincoln is up and people are checking in there. So let's go to YouTube and see if we can see the live. We'll have to mute the volume on this. All right, it looks like we're doing something over there on YouTube. YouTube isn't broadcasting. Great. Let's go back. Let's see. Stop stream. Start stream. Let's see. Although I'm having such problems with YouTube, it's not even funny. All right, let's see if it gets up and going again. I just restarted the YouTube. All right, looks like it's working. All right, somebody let me know if YouTube's up and working now. It says people are checked in, but I don't see I don't see any activity going on over there. All right, I see Caesar. Caesar's on YouTube. Caesar, are you able to hear the audio and everything on YouTube? All right, I just rebooted it. So I just rebooted YouTube. So hopefully it'll it'll check in. All right, I got somebody, I got Caesar saying everything's good on YouTube. So hopefully it's working. Okay, that we covered the, the filing fees, the financial position, uh, the free cheat sheet, which is available. Um, you know, look for if it's important that when you get bank statements in the mail or you get loan statements in the mail, open them up because you never know. I've had cases where there's joint accounts with third parties that were, were never known to one spouse. Um, a home refinance. Um, I had one case where the client I was representing was surprised to know that the home was refinanced and she wasn't aware of it. And the, the husband fought, the husband did the refinance and forged her name on the refinance. And I've had cases where um, there were significant student loans. You know, somebody was taking classes and didn't tell the other spouse they were taking classes and they racked up several tens of thousands of dollars in student loans as well as other loans. All right, so it looks like, it looks like YouTube is actually working now. All right, look for look for the unknown loans, the student loans um, come with, um, you know, a divorce action gets filed and there's children involved and then all of a sudden another paternity action is filed and now somebody's alarm is going off. Another paternity action is filed by another woman that the wife in the in the dissolution or the divorce action didn't know about. So, you know, just keep an idea. Weird things happen in family court all the time. Things pop up that, you know, are, are very much a surprise to at least one of the parties involved. Um, you want to get a jump on preparing those finances. When you file for, and when you file in Florida for a dissolution of marriage or any type of paternity action, within 45 days, you have to have mandatory disclosure in, which is your financial affidavit, your bank statements, your tax returns and all that stuff. And the cheat sheet that I have that I'll link to below, and that's on my Twitter account pinned as number one, 
will help you do that. Most people, I would say 70% of the clients that I have, have problems getting it in within that 45 days. And if it's a situation where um, you're asking for emergency or expedited relief, like temporary support or something like that, let's say, you know, you filed your case and then the other party, the other spouse moves out of the house and cuts you off completely financially and you need to move for that expedited or emergency relief, you need to get a financial aid, a financial affidavit done and filed as soon as possible before that expedited hearing comes up. So that's another thing to keep in mind. <coughs> Otherwise, 45 days, um, a lot of clients just can't do it. The cheat sheet will help because it's got some instructions and it's laid out in an organized step-by-step -step manner and it'll help you get everything together. You know, I recommend people start getting stuff together as soon as they realize that they are going to file for divorce. So let's talk about the actual filing for divorce. The number one piece of advice I give all clients that come to me in divorce cases is do not file for divorce. Try to make it work. Make sure you exhaust all resources because by all means do it. It will save you a boatload of money, a boatload of grief, a boatload of stress, and a boatload of just complete frustration because the family law process is frustrating to begin with. And then you run into, especially in places like South Florida, like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, the dockets are so loaded that it's hard to get hearings. And then the, the system itself re-frustrates you. And it can be very, very, very frustrating. I have found that that clients have to reach a certain limit before they'll actually file for divorce. You know, you have to be up here and you have to be buttoned against that limit or over that limit of what you'll what you'll accept in life and the level of happiness that you're, you're willing to live with, or I should say unhappiness before you file for divorce. I get people all the time that call me, you know, two, three, four times saying they want to file, but they never file and they just haven't hit that limit. And when that limit, when they reach that limit or go over that limit, that's when they'll file. But just realize that a lot of times when you tell your spouse you're filing for divorce, it's like, it's like an act of war. Some people just go berserk and just cause problem after problem after problem. And when you throw that type of case, into the adversarial process with the courts, it can get it can get very stressful and very emotional. Um, a lot of cases aren't like that, but some are. A lot of cases I get move through the process very smoothly. You know, we get everything filed, we get the finances filed, we get off to mediation. They they get an agreement at mediation. The mediation agreement signed. It's sent to the judge. The judge signs off of, and everything's flows very smoothly. And that's the way I try to make all my cases because I have it flow charted about how to move along in the case. And I explain that to my clients. If we can get your case moving along like that and get that flow going, you'll be a lot happier, a lot less stressed. And number one, you'll save a whole lot more money. Um, let me look over my notes. That's about it for things you should know before you get, um, before you even file for divorce. You should, you should be on top of those things because you don't want surprises to come up. When surprises come up, they become very stressful and very emotional. That being said, if there's any questions, let me look back real quick. I thank everybody for coming in. I really appreciate all you guys. The biggest Miami fan is always here every week. I appreciate that. I do the live sessions every week, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. And then later I'll go and uh, it'll be on YouTube. I'll go in and edit it and I'll put links in it and make it available as a regular YouTube video. All right. I think we got the YouTube thing working. Thanks for all the input on that. Blue Lives Matter 137 from New Mexico State. Patrol Detectives Division. All right, from the New Mexico State Patrol Squads. Good to see you on here. I don't know if you know that, but I don't know if you know it, but I used to be a Miami-Dade homicide. Um, always happy to represent cops. Divorce seems like a bad scene all around. It very well can be 
it can move it's it can move very very quickly flow very very nicely and be resolved in short order or it can be a disaster anywhere in between and you really don't know what it's going to be until you get into it and that applies as far as attorney's fees goes because the divorces are very expensive and people one of the first questions they always ask is how much will this divorce cost and then they'll ask how long will it take and both of those depend upon the ability of the litigants to get together and to come to compromise and settle their own issues and just remember it's always better to settle the issues between the parties than it is to have a judge review your file for however long they review the file and then make a decision that will affect the rest of your life all right bke you have a question go ahead and shoot with it i'll pick it up I have quite the case, very solid, but need backing. All right. Well, tell me what it is. Hello from the Florida Department of Corrections, Hawaii 5 -0. How are you? I've been to several of your facilities. I go to Okeechobee a lot. I have a lot of clients who reside at Okeechobee and in South Florida, so I'm familiar uh, with those two. I've been up to Stark a few times and I used to go around up to a lot of the correctional facilities doing interviews when I was when I was a homicide detective. Is it possible to sue the, or anything? Sovereign immunity comes in. I'm not sure what the federal IRS sovereign immunity statute is, but I know what the state is in Florida. Florida governments have sovereign immunity. Um, the sovereign immunity is waived up to $250 and basic or $250,000. What that means is if you have a case that exceeds $250,000, you have to get a law passed through the legislature in the state to collect above that. And everything for equitable distribution tables, anything that deals with Santa Rosa. I haven't been to Santa Rosa facility and no, I've never, I don't think I've ever been to Santa Rosa facility. I've been to, I've been to Santa Rosa County. I think the, the furthest North, and west I've been, if I remember, is Lancaster in Gilcrest County. And then I've been to Stark and Rayford a few times. But I don't think I don't think I've been to anything north or west of there. The, the more the most northwest I think I've ever been to is Lancaster. All right. Jeff says, my school lost some of my records. Can I sue them? Yeah, I mean you could. When it comes to suing people, you could sue people for anything. Now, keep in mind, I'm a Florida lawyer, so I only know about Florida law. I'm only licensed to practice in Florida. So if you're in another state, I can't give you any advice. But in Florida, you could basically sue anybody for anything. But your chances of being successful, well, that depends. And, you know, a lot of times what you're, what you're going to see is when you do somebody, the first thing they're going to do is a motion to dismiss to see how good your suit is. So that's that's general civil. That's something I, I don't practice. I practice, you know, I practice three things, a lot of three things. I practice family law, which includes domestic violence, divorce, paternity, anything to do with family relations except adoptions. I do criminal defense and other platforms because I'm on I have two I have two pages on Facebook, the law offices of Patrick McGeehan and Ask a Florida divorce lawyer. I'm on Instagram as Magic City Lawyer. I'm on TikTok as Magic City Lawyer. I'm on Twitter as PJ McGeehan Law, and I'm on LinkedIn as Patrick McGeehan. So when I go when I go to like Okeechobee or something, I'll usually post something on there when I'm going for those facilities. So you know, I'll, and I'll post some pictures and stuff so people get an idea of of what they're like. But I have clients. The only places I have clients now are Okeechobee and South Florida. I think that's it. But I've been to other facilities. The other facilities I've been to was when I was a homicide detective. All right, let's look in here and let's make sure YouTube is still up. It looks good. All right, any other questions? Let's look through here. The IRS wrongfully denied your foreign earned income. Check with Dana Kaufman. He's... I mean, he's on. If you Google him, he'll come up because that's when I don't have my when I don't have his card with me. That's what I uh, 
that's what I do. I Google and he comes right up. He's on Brickell Avenue, right down from my office. He's like at 700 block of Brickell Avenue in Miami. But anything to do with <coughs> IRS or taxes, Dana Kaufman's the guy to go to. Uh, let's see. All right, Jeff, once again, that's that's like civil, general civil stuff. I so I had a TikTok, huh? I gotta figure out for some reason the first couple times I did the live. I went into the preview on YouTube streaming software for some reason. So I'm going to have to probably mess with that and see if I can get it going. All right. Now the IRS sticks to denying. I can go after. I don't know. I don't know if you can go after the IRS or not. Dana Kaufman, he'd be a good guy to ask that question to. All right. That looks like it for questions over on YouTube. Everybody got a couple people in there. but. Okay, we've covered we've covered everything I wanted to cover tonight. I have a few things to go over for for the future. If there's any topics related to family law, criminal defense, or personal injury you would like me to discuss, or you would have to, like to have a live on, or like to see a live on, please let me know. You can DM me on you know TikTok. You can put in the comments on. Facebook or DM me on Facebook or Instagram, whatever, any of the platforms, or you can email me directly at Patrick at pjmlawyer.com. And if you, if you think of a topic you'd like to discuss, please let me know. You're included. Let me know. And I was thinking about uh, doing live call-ins. If you would like to hear a live call-in, I have another number that I could use and we could do live questions while we're doing the live. And I think I can figure that out. All right. I have, I need your help. I need my users, my friends, my family, my online family, my followers. I need your help and input. I've been asked by a couple people to do a true crime podcast. And I've been researching it a little bit. And I see that true crime is, is a major thing. And there's, there's like conventions, like there's one in Orlando called Crime Con in May. And people are apparently going nuts about true crime. And I've been asked by more, more than a few people if I would start telling stories and do true crime podcasts about cases I've handled, cases I know about, or just give my input on cases. I mean, other than being a detective and being in homicide, I really, I'm really uneducated on the whole true crime trend. So if you know anything about true crime, you have any suggestions or ideas, please let me know. Um, once again, if you'd like to see a live on another platform, please let me know. I'll put it in. Say hi to Rose. Rose Ann Parks. Hi, Rose Ann. How are you? Um, other than that, that's it. That's all the information I have. For you tonight, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll run back through. I don't see anything going on over on YouTube, but I'll check again. Let me check through here, make sure I didn't. Miss, yeah, I think a live call in, Miami fan. I think a live call in would be great. All right, let's go back. All right, let's see. Jeff, I'm thinking about marrying a girl you got. A kid. I got this girl. I'm going to marry. He's got a kid. Okay. I mean, what I have to pay. I don't, Jeff. I don't understand. If you if you marry somebody that already has a kid, the only way you could be liable for child support is if you and you split up. When you split up, is if you adopt. If you adopt that child. All right, I think that's it. All right, if that's it, if I've answered everybody's questions, I don't see anything coming in on email, at least not yet anyway. Once again, I appreciate all you guys checking in, my followers and users and my friends here on the different social media platforms on TikTok and YouTube. I love you guys, especially on TikTok. I just I just love the 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 whole atmosphere that that's going on on TikTok, it's it's just awesome. Once again, you can catch me on Instagram and Magic City Lawyer, TikTok Magic City Lawyer, Twitter PJ McGee and Law, 
LinkedIn is Patrick McGeehan. Two Facebook group, one Facebook group, one Facebook page. The group is Ask a Florida Divorce Lawyer. The page is the law offices of Patrick J. McGeehan. The email, patrick at pjmlawyer.com. You guys are the greatest. Thanks for coming in every week, especially you guys that come in all the time. Um, that's it. Let me go back. Make sure I know something came in. I had a question. So would I have to pay child? You only have to pay child support if you adopt a child. I thought the pause of your YouTube was my internet. Is is YouTube still going good? It seems to be working okay now. Uh, going to be on Friday. All right, Jeff, congratulations. You're getting married on Friday. Everybody say congratulations to Jeff. All right, Sonny, I'm interested in the paternity after marriage and divorce, finding out the kid is not biological. All right, here's how it works in Florida. If you're married and you have a child during the course of that marriage, that child is presumed to be born of the marriage and the two parents are presumed to be the parents. So you have to do a, um, you have to go through this whole process to disavow that or to change that or challenge that paternity. But that's like a, a situation I've had in a few cases where a woman has an affair, she gets pregnant by this other guy, they have a baby, she's still married to her husband, that baby is considered to be born of that marriage and that guy who's the biological father legal cannot get in there to establish any type of time sharing with the child. So if, the, if a child's born during the marriage, during a legal marriage, the child is a child of the marriage until it's disproved. For the crime podcast wouldn't homicide experience be, uh, waiting for the second part of that, why has the father, she abuse him and does it do child abuse cases, when you're dealing with child abuse cases, that's a DCF arena in those cases easily go off the rails and get crazy. I don't know. I think, I don't know. I mean, I, the podcast I've listened to Miami fan is, um, is two, there's two guys that were sheriff's deputies in Louisiana that retired and they're doing it. So I, I think it'd be enough. I mean, I had 17 years with most of that in homicide. That's a lot of cases. I mean, we're back back when I was a policeman, we were getting like hundreds and hundreds of, of homicides a year. Now it's a lot less. It's less than half of what it used to be. All right. <sighs> N-V-G-E-E-S-U-S. -E -E I have a question regarding U.S. serving town militia while serving on active duty. I don't know. I've had mine for three years alone. Oh, your dad, your uncle was chief of police up there? That's cool. Chicago's a cool department to work for. Yeah, you're always going to have to, in some cases, in some in paternity cases, in court orders, and you have to keep going back on contempt motions after contempt motions, and you just can't let them frustrate you because that is exactly what they're trying to do is frustrate you and make you give up. All right, I tried asking my post-legal team, and they pretty much told me to go kick rocks. Yeah, I can understand that. Kick rocks, pound sand. It sounds like a no. I know there's something. I know there's something. And I can't remember what the what the um, you know what the theory behind it is, but I know there's something about you can't be in more than one branch of the military at the same time. If that matters, I'd say that's a quite you know that's a question for JAG. So if you want to post legal, they're probably JAGs. So I mean, I'm sure they know better than I would know. You said it's a mother state. I searched Dana Cook in Florida as a spelling. No, Dana Kaufman. Let's go. I'll tell you what it is here in a minute.
Dana Kaufman CPA 305-455-0314. Tell them I sent you. All right, I've been up to Chipley, Jeff. Yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna get a lot of you're not gonna get a lot of characters on uh on a live message tweet here. You don't get a lot of characters on on TikTok forever. Thoughts on the show? Better call Sal. I think no, nah, it's Dana Kaufman with a K. Better call Sal. I think somebody already has that. All right, Mickey, single dad, you have court your final on Friday. Well, I don't know why they I don't know why they schedule final hearings on Fridays. I think it's always bad to have a final hearing on a Friday or to start a trial on a Friday because if something bad happens, it ruins your whole weekend. But if something good happens, then congratulations. But anyway, good luck on your final hearing. And go prepare. Make sure you read over everything at least the night before. And dude, there's there's bad judges everywhere. There's there's a lot of good judges. There are bad judges that I've seen them in different different counties. So can't can't criticize judges. So we're not going to do that. Anyway, it looks like we're all catched up on both platforms. Once again, thank you very much. I'm very humbled. I appreciate everybody that takes the time to join me on Wednesday at six. We'll be on again next Wednesday at six p.m. Eastern. Let me know if you have any suggestions or you want to hear anything, uh, any particular topics. Um, and other than that, thanks again for coming in. I really appreciate it. I'm really humbled that so many people take their time to spend you know, an hour with me on a, on a Wednesday night. I hope the information I provide you is helpful or at least gives you some insight or points you in the right direction wherever you are in life. And I always invite you, you know, join my YouTube channel. I have a hundred business as well as some great life tips and life lessons that I learned from being a, a lawyer, <coughs> being a lawyer and a policeman. Certainly check those out. You're most welcome to. And I personally invite you to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I personally invite you to contact me and subscribe and follow on all my platforms. I love hearing from you. Thanks a lot. And good night, everyone. Y'all are the best. Thank <laughs> you.